it's an interesting thing about about literary voices is once you get it, uh, it sort of dictates the novel. It, it tells you what the novel's going to be about, and it puts you in touch with the world you're writing about. Sometimes you feel an expansion of knowledge as though suddenly you know this place, and it's because of the voice. That's the only time when writing uh, verges on, on being a little bit mystical, is when you get a literary voice and you feel a kind of Vatic um, connection, and suddenly you're able to write something that you didn't think you could write before. The rest of writing is very pedestrian and, and difficult. Um, and you know, either athletic or, or uh, arduous. But, but getting the voice, sometimes you, you feel this um, brief moment of being sort of swept away. And that's, that was very much the case with the Virgin Suicides. I was home visiting my, my brother in Gross Point, Michigan and started talking to his babysitter, the babysitter he, for my nephew. And she told me that she had um, tried to commit suicide and all her sisters had. I don't know why she divulged this to me, but she did. So I was, I was curious about it. I tried to ask her some questions about why, and um, she, she couldn't say anything. She just said, we were under a lot of pressure. So, I, you know, the book started, as many books do, with a kind of question and, and curiosity about something that seemed unlikely and amazing, but you, you had no idea how it ever came to pass. I remember writing a bit of it on, on a cru actually a cruise down the Nile. I hope this is true and I'm not making this up. I went on a small cruise on the Nile and I wrote the beginning of, of the Virgin Suicides on, on that trip. Two things came together with writing the, the book. First I had the idea of you know, a group of sisters who committed suicide, but I didn't have the, the point of view and the, the idea that it was going to be told by a, a larger consciousness, a first person plural voice. And, and that's what I, what I came up with when I was on the, on the Nile cruise. Um, and I wrote the first, the first sentence or so, and that was, the, that was the beginning. I didn't really know if it would be a novel. I didn't know if it would be published. I hadn't published anything before. I'd written a couple of aborted novels, um, so I was used to them flaming out, and I was, you know, ready for that to happen again. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't realize until many years after writing The Virgin Suicides um, why, I wrote, why I wrote The Virgin Suicides. I think um, psychologically, emotionally, the real influence um, was the experience of growing up in Detroit. While I was growing up, the, the city was becoming depopulated. There were the riots. All the buildings were uh, falling into decay. They're closed up. They're you know burned out. My 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 grandfather's bar was torched and burned. So, growing up there, you just saw things giving into entropy. It left in me as a sense of evanescence that things are impermanent, um, and you know the the story of these girls who who die so young, the way that their disappearance haunts the the narrator of the book. That's really the feel, the way I feel about about Detroit and and, and growing up there. I wrote two hours every night, um, and then f um, on, the, on the weekends, I would spend four hours. E each book that you, that you write, you swim a long way from the pier at a, at a certain point. You just don't know what's going to happen. Um, and I, I guess if I, if I learned anything um, with The Virgin Suicides, I, I just learned that if you, if you keep going, you'll, you'll, you'll figure out how to, how to shape the thing. I lost my job in the middle of writing the book, so I had certain um, practical, you know, reasons to, to finish this book. I think I might have just learned um, a little bit more about, about perseverance. I got the title very, very early. I think I had it almost simultaneous with the first paragraph. With your first book, you, you don't want to name it like Joe Bascom you know, something like that, or like Red. You know, just that you don't want it, because no one knows who you are. You've got to at least have a title that someone would say, what is that, even if they don't like it. It didn't, you know, you're, you, you don't feel any different when you're, when you're writing because you published a book. You don't feel any more confident. You, you always kind of end with a feeling of um, dissatisfaction of what you've done, what, what can you do next. Don DeLillo said um, once that, um, 
your first book is kind of a gift. You, you write it, you don't know how you, how, how, you, how you wrote it. It just kind of comes out, and it's the second book where you teach yourself to be a writer. I, I think that's true. You write your first book in a great state of innocence. You're not anxious about it. You, you don't expect that anyone's going to like it, read it, or that it will be published. You're just doing it because this is what you want to do. And so you're, you're ignorant of the publishing process. You're not thinking someone will review it. There's nothing. It's, it's, very, it's very nice. I, I, I try to get back in that state of mind when I'm writing now. It's, it's difficult, but it is the, it is the more, most pure and blissful state of writing is, is in total an anonymity, just with, with something that you're doing because you want to do it.